Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike from Obox, back with another video. This time, this tutorial is gonna be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more advanced. So we're not gonna go step by step through it. We're actually gonna be looking at a finalized comp and we're kind of doing this similar to the way Workbench TV does videos. If you wanna see advanced tutorials on After Effects, I highly recommend you check Workbench TV out. But um, this time we're gonna be looking at kind of a black hole effect. Um, it's not perfectly exactly what a black hole would look like, but I think it looks pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and jump in After Effects here and see what we have. Okay, so here we are in After Effects, and what you can see here is we have kind of this black hole with kind of the the event horizon, I guess, with, you know, whatever the gas is kind of circling around it. Um, but you can see here that the stars, as well as the gases, are kind of warped by the black hole. So um, I'm going to show you kind of where I started here by making this ring. So I have three copies of it, but they're all pretty much the same. Um, starting with kind of just a white solid. Um, I just added a gradient ramp. So actually to start, I masked this out and added a little bit of a feather. But, um, you know, the first thing was a gradient ramp going from yellow to red with um, it being radially outward. And then I added a CC ball action. So basically that just turned it into kind of particles, which, um, you know, is always an easy way to get kind of particles from a solid. And then what I went ahead is I added a radial blur with this anti-aliasing set to high. When it's set to low, it gives you a really kind of bad effect. Um, you definitely want to set that to high. But, um, and I cranked this up like pretty high. So it's a pretty smooth disc. I use this to create rings for planets all the time because it creates a really cool effect. Um, on the CC ball action, I also added some rotation on the Z axis. That way this whole thing kind of actually spins. So if I get rid of the radial blur, you could see here that this whole thing kind of spins. And I have this key framed with a loop out continue. So basically I wanted my composition to end right here. So I made sure that all of these um, rotations were multiples, um, a whole number multiples. So five, three, and two, instead of like 5.2 because I wanted it to loop properly. Um, so when you add the radial blur here, you kind of get this really cool kind of spinning effect. It's like almost like a smoky spinning, ef spinning effect. And I'll show you what I have on the other two. So the other two are pretty much the same, except for the radial blur on this one is turned down way down and the amount of rotations is turned down. And then on the one on the bottom here, um, radial blur is turned up a little bit more, um, but it's a little bit chunkier. So I increased the size of the, um, the orbs or the balls on the CC ball action. So when you layer these all together, um, it's actually pretty CPU intensive. So I'm gonna set this down to a quarter but you can see here that the whole thing kind of spins. Um, at a quarter, it kind of looks like garbage. At full, it just takes too long to actually view it. Um, one thing that I actually did was I was doing stuff for Cinema 4D, render, or kind of 3D stuff. So I actually left my renderer on 3D. So it took way longer to render stuff um, and to view it. So if you don't know if you accidentally left this on or your composition's going really slow, if you just go to composition, composition settings and go to 3D render, just make sure it's set to classic 3D unless you intentionally want it to be on Cinema 4D or ray traced um, because otherwise it just slows it down even more. So uh, I took this ring and I added it to a new composition. I duplicated it. So you can see here I have two rings and I kind of tilted them in the um, in the X rotation to kind of be like a ring around a circle. So let me just get rid of some of these other effects here. And we're gonna go through what they are, but um, I'm just gonna get rid of some of these just so you can kind of see what we have. So we have the first ring and we have the second ring. Now you'll notice here that they're actually masked, masked out so I'm gonna actually just set this back to no track mat for both of these. And then you can see kind of that we have just two rings. But the trick here is I have an adjustment layer in between. And this adjustment layer has something called flow motion on it. So when I set this, turn this on, and I turn the top ring off, you can kind of see here that it bends the light around this center. Um, I'll show you what, it, what I mean. So when I increase this, or decrease it, you could see here that it kind of bends light. And this is perfect for a black hole effect. So when I added the second ring, so I needed the perfectly circle, circular ring on the kind of forward side or our side of the event horizon because the light is able to escape, but on the rear side, I needed it to be morphed. So I created some masks and I basically, on the top one, I masked out the top. So I set this to invert. 
And on the bottom one, I kind of just masked out um, kind of the, the bottom. So I set this to um, inverted mask. And you can see here that I kind of get this really cool effect where I still get the morphing, but um, on the ring here, I, I, I still get the, it's, it's not morphing on this side. Um, you might be curious what's on these rings. So I set two glow channels um, because I kind of wanted it to have more of a glow. Whereas over here, this was kind of dull looking. So I added two glows onto both. Um, that way I can control kind of how much glow we get on the outside as well as how much glow we get on the inside. And uh, other things that you might want to consider. Um, I think that's all that I would consider there. So those are the two rings. And I just added basically a black circle uh, in the center. So this one's also 3D. So this is actually just kind of placed um, in the center of the two um, discs. So that's how you kind of get your event horizon um, or your kind of black hole. But this kind of just didn't really look quite interesting enough. So I went ahead and added this halo or what I'm calling a halo. Um, I'll open up this composition here so you could see I'm using a free plugin by Video Copilot. It's called Saber. And I just have two here and I have the intensity at the start. Let me see if I can find these settings. So I have the intensity at the start to be 100 and the intensity at the end to be, um, let's see, I think zero. Or start size zero and then end size um, 100%. So that way I kind of get this cool like um, line. And this is just on a mask. So if I hit M on the keyboard, you can see my mask here. And I do that by just clicking this and going to layer mask. This is actually a free plugin by um, Video Copilot. You definitely should check it out. It's really super useful. But I just duplicated it and then spun it around. So you kind of get this really cool like glowing arc around it. And so when you turn that halo on, it's gonna take a while. For some reason, this entire composition just kills my computer. Um, so I turned it on, but I also set it to screen because if I make this invisible, you could see here that um, that if I didn't turn this to screen and this was just on normal, I would kind of get this black. So I even had to like create a mask because you know, you'd get this, this black background. So I created a mask and set it to screen. So that basically got rid of the black. You still get a little bit of a halo, but it's not a big problem. So I went ahead and added some smoke here and I had an adjustment layer with noise. Um, after watching, um, Erica of Anderson's videos, I've just kind of fallen in love with using, or not her videos, but looking at her gifts on Instagram and Twitter and Patreon. I've just kind of fallen in love with the look that you get when you use grain. So I almost had grain onto everything now. It kind of sucks because it gets compressed really bad on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter, but um, at least your master looks really good. I usually set grain to about 8%. Sometimes I use color, sometimes I don't. This time I use color, but then I just added a glow on top of everything because I think I thought it just needed a little bit more, um, but that wasn't really necessary. I just thought it looked better. And then um, let's see, what else do I have here? I have some smoke that I ended up getting rid of and I have some stars here that I was messing around with as well as another adjustment layer. But I figured that this honestly was so slow that I decided to just render this entire thing out as a TIFF sequence. So I just went to composition, um, add to render queue, and I just chose a TIFF sequence with alpha. And what that was able to give me was something that looked like this. So I rendered it first out with the wall, with the black background, but then I went ahead and I just rendered it out with the alpha. You can see here on the ends, it's kind of clipping. Not a big problem because it's actually just gonna fit in my composition. I could always mask that out later and feather it. So once I did that, I added it to a new composition and now I could actually see it in action. So you could see the, the kind of outside spinning and it just looks like super violent and really awesome and you know, not too fast, but not too slow either. Um, but let me just get rid of the other stuff. So this is basically just what it looks like. That, that was the render. Um, if I hit you on the keyboard, I just added a scale and a rotation. So this thing kind of increases in size and kind of turns a little bit. So I thought that that looked pretty cool, but um, I needed my star background. So I created this kind of 
thousand by a thousand star map. And I used another free plugin by uh, Video Copilot called Orb. So with Orb, I was able to create this kind of three dimensional um, kind of space background. There's a tutorial actually on Video Copilot's YouTube channel where he talks about how to use this. I recommend you check it out. There's a lot of settings here that I messed around with, but the main thing you need to know is that I just changed the rotation on the X, Y, and Z. So this kind of moved um, a little bit around and I'll show you why I wanted that. So I have another adjustment layer here with another flow motion on it. So you can see here that if I make this invisible, you can kind of get an idea of what flow motion is doing here. It creates a really great black hole effect. And when the stars move, they actually like kind of warp around that spot. So it looks like super, super awesome. And when you add the, um, when you add the kind of black hole there, it looks really cool. So once everything was started moving, then you kind of get your full effect with the kind of stars kind of warping around it as well as the big spinning um, orb. I messed around with adding some twirl, but I didn't really think it added too much. So I'm actually just gonna delete twirl, but then I added some noise and I should probably turn this to, to, to eight because that's what the noise level was on um, the top layer. But since this adjustment layer is not on top of the top layer, I'm not doubling the noise. So that's pretty much it. Um, this project file will be uploaded to Patreon as well as the TIFF sequence. So you could check that out. Um, and you know, if you have any questions, uh, please be sure to leave them in the comments down below or send me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Um, I always like to see what you guys create from this kind of stuff. Make sure you mess around with this and create something that's unique to you. Um, this was just kind of my take. I thought that this looked pretty cool and I felt that um, it kind of had the, the look and effects that I wanted for my style, but your style will be totally different and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Check out the project file on Patreon. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>